plants often want to grow tall so they can outcompete their neighbors for sunlight, and trees do this better than anyone. How they're able to grow to such impressive heights is because of the dense woody substance they're made of that we call wood. And you can use wood for everything. Paper. Furniture. Pencils. You can burn it, which makes heat. You can use their leaves for animal feed although you don't necessarily have to cut them down for it. The trees themselves alter the habitat where they grow, changing the compositions of the species. They can attract people who want to get away from the stresses of the city and watch the splendor of nature for a while, or they can attract people who want to shoot the splendor of nature for a while. And beside the recreation of hunting, something like a billion people rely on forests for food. The roots of trees wind and dig through the soil and help keep the soil in place. All the decaying plant matter also helps make the soil stick together, so it forms clumps or aggregates. The roots and organic matter together help build the soil structure, creating pore spaces that allows water to flow through and be absorbed better and recharge the water table. The organic matter is a big part of what makes the topsoil the topsoil. Among many other things, it helps hold and exchange nutrients for plants, which makes things grow better. There's usually more carbon in the organic matter of the soil than there is in the total above ground biomass. When you talk about forests sequestering carbon, you're mostly talking about the soil. Depending on the climate, it can take decades to centuries to build a nice healthy soil. But after logging without the roots or a steady stream of organic matter, you can lose the soil structure. The water doesn't penetrate as well, so it can run off, eroding the soil, which can diminish stream quality and cause floods, and after things just aren't going to be growing as well. It all depends on the soil, the climate, and what the managers are or are not doing. The end result could be another forest, but if care isn't taken, the end result could end up being a grassland or even a desert, setting the soil back hundreds and hundreds of years. The more trees there are, and the longer we leave them, the more of the forest benefits we get. But the more trees we cut, the more wood we get. There's a trade-off, at least in theory. In practice, forests are more often seen as just a source for wood or the trees are seen as in the way for using the land for other stuff. Because there's not always a market for these other benefits from the forest. But there is a market for wood and land. It's easy to see how you will gain from chopping the wood. Letting it stand to say help the whole town to maintain water quality and prevent flooding is a large personal gain missed, probably larger than the portion of the collective benefit earned, if you even live in that area. And on top of that, there is a time preference to have things in the present. People tend to discount the future. If a tree isn't changing in size or value, would you rather cut it down today or in 10 years? You want it today because you could have been using the money in that time or put the money in a bank. In 10 years time, you would just have more money than if you had sold it then. Also, we could be using the land in that time if for nothing else to grow another tree. So people tend to want to chop down a forest sooner rather than later. Check out our other video on discounting for more on that. Okay, so let's say there's a forest and then whoever's in charge decides to let it be cut chop, 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 they get the money, and then try to decide whether they're gonna replant the forest. It'll cost some amount of money, and let's say it'll give the same value as the previous harvest. If a forest takes 50 years to reach harvest maturity, the present value on the wood at a 5% discount rate, let's say, which is on the low side for a discount rate, would only be 8% of its future value. It may not be high enough to justify replanting the forest, so the owners may just take the wood, forget about that land, and just try to find some new forests that they can chop down. What they call forest mining or liquidation forestry. To a private organization, there is money in the trees, but it's basically a one-time payoff since the forest grows so slow. But if nothing is done with that area after, and you lose your soil, all these other things that the forest does, including the production of wood, can be gone for a very, very long time. You don't tend to see this kind of behavior if the forest is owned and managed by locals who get all these other benefits. A local will plan 50 years into the future for the benefit of their community, their children, and their culture. In this series, we're not going to get so much into silvicultural practices, but look at what influences the decision of when to cut down a forest, and look at the non-market values that should be considered to create an economically efficient system.